بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today I have chosen a topic which is quite unusual um, but is very relevant to the matters that concern our lives and uh, it is relevant uh, because everybody one way or another is involving it in this ideology. The people are confused by it and they quite not understand the meaning of it and so therefore I think it's worth uh, looking at uh, Freemasonry mm. from the perspective of Tasman. Um, there are many people who in the past have uh, become Freemasons and at the same time they have professed or they have declared that uh, they are Sufis and there are many who uh, have become Freemasons and they have become fundamental leaders of the development of modernist Islam Uh, Freemasonry is in, in the political language of the 20th century in words such as uh, pluralism and tolerance, particularly tolerance um, and uh, it is in our legal system through many of the laws that we take for granted including the most important which is the constitution uh, politically speaking if you want to characterize what Freemasonry is, is constitutionalism. Mm. If there is no stronger advocate for the creation of these new secular laws that uh, stand above the religious laws. In the case of Europe, above the canonic laws, the, which is the equivalent to our mothers. And uh, in our lands, the constitution places itself above the Quran and above all the mathers. This unusual way of uh, looking at uh, man written law, the idea that uh, this constitution places itself with the value above the religious law, is, is unprecedented in human history and is completely unthinkable in Islamic law. Uh, so this political idea of the constitution, and constitutionalism as in the movement that promotes the creation of constitutions, this is completely unproven, entangled, and originated with the secret societies that we know as Freemasons. Um, just out of uh, that, we can therefore conclude that we all live in Freemasonic societies. Mm -hmm. Since there is no country in the world that doesn't have a constitution, so when you look at Freemasonry, you don't have to go very far. You have it already in your own society. It's not something distant to us, it's something very close to us. And yet, it remains a mystery. The idea that the constitutions have been created by Freemasons uh, is a proven fact. And, uh, as I said earlier, all the, all the countries in the world have a constitution except one, and that one country is Israel. Mm. Israel is the only country that they say, well, we don't need this nonsense. Mm. Uh, but for the rest of the world, uh, the constitution is applicable. And you can say that the creation of the new world order and the creation of constitutions is very much the same. And in the creation of this new Novus Ordum Seculorum, uh, and the United States, there is a very clear implication that the first constitution of the United States was clearly uh, established by a majority of Freemasons. It's, it's an established fact that the first president of the United States was a Freemason. It's an established fact uh, that uh, m most of the prime ministers of Malaysia have been pro Freemasons is an unknown fact, but uh, most certainly the first and the second. And uh, uh, 
many of uh, the Muslim leaders in the past have become Freemasons. All the presidents of the United States after Truman have become Freemasons. And the list goes on. And I don't want to enter into this thing because it sounds like conspiracy theories. And uh, the, the listing is so offensive that one has to it's, take the escape route of this is conspiracy. But it's not conspiracy, it's actually history. But if you want to get all the factual elements, which I found it a little bit shocking, the whole thing, um, just go to internet and check it out yourself. That's not what, uh, what interests about uh, Freemasonry. That's the surface of Freemasonry. What really interests us is how it has affected Islam, how this way of thinking has affected Islam. And we want to understand it in order to counteract it. Um, while constitutionalism is the political front, the political manifestation of Freemasons, this is what they've done. So any country that has constitutions, you find them there. And it's particularly at the time of independence, at the very critical point when the Muslim countries had to be created, these constitutional forces, they were very clearly in favor of creation of constitutions. In fact, there was no other way of gaining independence. It, you, the only way you can get independence is by creating a constitution. And uh, the creation of this constitution, uh, it was um, like a package. Uh, if you notice, the constitutions, as you've written, from different countries, as diverse as uh, Iran or the United States, you find tremendous numbers of similarities, not only in the very principle of constitution, but uh, in uh, what I call the three fundamentals of capitalism that appear in all the constitutions, it doesn't matter which one you looked into. And these three elements are the creation of a central bank, legal tender, and the national debt. And without these three elements, capitalism cannot operate in a place like Malaysia or in a country like Pakistan. And without these three elements, uh, capitalism will be crippled. But this is, uh, this is allowed, this is uh, established without exception in all the Muslim countries with the constitution. Um, if you go back in history over this element of constitutionalism and you go back to the critical point of the fall of the caliphate, then you find that uh, all the, the forces that they gathered against the Islamic uh, caliphate, the Dar al-Islam, they call themselves constitutionalist. Constitutionalism was the code of saying no more caliph, and we will have a constitutional monarch. And, and movements that we have a great esteem, such as Jamaat al Islamiyah or, or Juan al Muslimin, who were speaking, or theoretically, we have heard them speaking in favor of uh, the caliphate. In the later versions, no, not anymore. But at the beginning, they did. They were not speaking about the restoration of the caliphate, they were speaking about the restoration of a constitutional monarch in the style of England or France, or no, not France, Spain or Denmark and so on. And that, of course, that is not Islamic. Uh, so, constitutionalism and anti-Islam are two things that come together, completely together. Now, the, the, the shocking facts is to discover who is who in these constitutionalism issues. When you go back to the history of constitutionalism in the Muslim world, the names that appear forward are shocking. Shocking because they are people very relevant to the way we think today. This is one aspect, this is the political aspect. But the, the esoteric aspect, or the spiritual aspect, some people would say, of Freemasonry is the idea of tolerance. Now, people think tolerance is, is a principle of uh, humanity established from the days of Adam and Eve. No, uh, tolerance is a principle of religious indifference. What tolerance means is I can kick you out of this country because you are a foreigner, because you are born in Indonesia. Uh, and therefore you are deprived of any rights and you have no saying and you will be underpaid and you will be treated differently in the law because you have a different nationality but the religious identity has no importance 
is the reverse of the process whereby religious identity is what gave you the authority. The passport to go to Mecca and Medina has been Ashadu an la ilaha illa Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That was my visa. And that's why many people, many people who in the past wanted to come in, they went. And to fake to be a Muslim, it was Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Never mind, you have to know a lot more than that because you are caught there, you know what the consequences are. But this religious identity, religious identity, was the primal factor of mankind. What uh, identified brotherhood was that we pray together, that they have identity in relation to what is our fundamental belief. That is what creates brotherhood, and this is what is clearly stated in Quran. The idea of nationalism based on ethnical, not even ethnical, on geographical boundaries, geographical boundaries that they are as absurd as the divisions between the Malay nations, for example, and uh, the border of Thailand, and, uh, and the case of Singapore, and, uh, and the case of Mindanao, etc., etc. Well, n not to speak about the divisions in the Sahara Desert, where the noble Muslim nation of the Tuareg uh, having been massacred by the French on, on several occasions, they're about to do it again, as we're speaking, in Mali. Uh, they are, they, they have now five, they need five, five passports in order to live in the lands that they had been for centuries, the lands of the Tuareg. This is tolerance. This is the meaning of tolerance. The meaning of tolerance is intolerance, but outrageous intolerance, only based on the absolutely manipulative and control a system, political system of passports and nationalities based on the interest of somebody else. It doesn't represent the people. We have seen countries divided by half for many centuries, but only by the interest of greater powers that they have decided to put a line between Algeria and, and, and the countries of the Sub-Sahara just for no reason to